All right, this video is going to be about writing soap notes. It's really geared towards medics in the aid station or a TMC, trying to help them how to think or uh, ways to think about a patient. But it can really be used um, for nursing students, med students, PA students, whatever. It can be used uh, as just a way to think. That's what I'm trying to do here is teach you how to think about uh, approaching a patient. So the purpose of a soap note, in my opinion, is to prove or disprove that medical condition. And when I say the purpose, I mean you should write that note in order to convince someone else who's reading it that that's what the patient has. So that's how you approach it, in my opinion. And that's how you would ask questions to rule out conditions and you would ask questions to rule in conditions in your differential. You'll do an exam to prove or disprove based on what the patient's telling you. And so if you approach it that way, I think that uh, you can write a good soap note. Of course, it's also to, you know, measure progress. So if something is different this time than it was on the last note, when you read it or someone else reads it, then you can see that that's there. And then of course, it's also to document for their medical record. And that's another reason why you want to have a good note is for your battle buddy to have that condition documented. Here's the format, the subjective objective assessment plan. So in the subjective, I really give a lot of freedom here uh, to my medics when I'm teaching them this. And that's because I want them to ask the right questions. I don't care how they really go about it. So I let a lot of them write OPQ or ST up top. I let them write sample. Um, that's more of a medic kind of thing as far as last uh, oral intake. Those kinds of things are not always important. But they might be helpful for someone before, like if they're in the field and they're going to end up having surgery or something like that. But just remember, subjective is what they tell you. That is in their opinion. It is not something you measure. It's not something that I can test. It's only what they're telling you. And you're asking them questions to help rule in and rule out conditions. So you're asking them questions um, from a wide perspective and narrowing it in. Obviously, if they come and tell you they have a sore throat, I don't think you have to start so wide as asking them about their toes. But it's meant to uh, kind of ask pertinent positives and pertinent negatives. So, um, you know, if it's a sore throat, you might ask them, uh, like I guess a, any kind of condition, you, like as far as a maybe a condition which could involve meningitis, if you were saying, hey, uh, do you have, have you had any neck pain? And they would say, no, that would be a pertinent negative. Versus if they said they have had subjective fevers, meaning they feel they have a fever, that might be a pertinent positive. So um, those are really things that you're trying to prove or disprove by asking the questions. And if it's a, always list your chief complaint. And if it's a musculoskeletal injury, you got to ask the mechanism, mechanism of action. People forget that all the time. How did it happen? How did it happen? How did it happen? What were you doing? You were running and you stepped off the side of the curve and you felt pain on the lateral side of your ankle. It really helps you when you invert your ankle to know what you're looking for. I'm not really thinking about the wrists, you know, or like all the time people come tell me this is what the exam looks like. I'm like, how did it happen? That's always part of it. you got to ask them. So the objective is not what they tell you. It's what you can measure. So the subjective should really lead you to your exam and your tests and things like that. Of course, your vital signs are always in there. That's an objective measurement. Nobody can lie about their blood pressure. Um, and then any exams that you do, they talk about their sore throat. You're going to do ENT, like their throat, look at their ears. You know, I always listen to heart and lungs, but you know, it it's uh, it's going to lead you based on what they tell you in the subjective, what you should be looking for in the objective, and what tests you should order. Strep test for a sore throat, right? So it's just an example or an X-ray for that ankle if they rolled it. So uh, just think about you know that. The subjective funnels down a little bit to your objective. Of course, your upset, your assessment, which is what you think is going on, or maybe a differential, meaning this or possibly this. Your plan is, of course, what you're going to do about it. I think the important things to remember here are um, discuss your reasoning. I like people to kind of use a discussion style. That's how I do it. I'm writing about what I think it is, why I think it is, and what I'm going to do about it. And if not that, then I'm going to try this. And of course, it depends on what it is, whether how much detail I'm going to get into it. But I think you need to give them, uh, you know, you try to elaborate to the next guy, kind of the plan, what's going on. 
So your disposition, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to put them on crutches? Are you going to put them on quarters? Are you going to send them home? Are you going to re release them without any restrictions? And then when to return to the clinic? If it gets worse, come back. I always tell them that, and I always document it. So I say if things get worse, you should return to the, to the A station or go to the emergency room uh, if your condition worsens to that point. And then I tell them, um, I always document in my notes something that I was taught by one of the docs I work for. Patient expressed understanding. So I'm asking, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I document that. So that's really the things you need to be looking at for your SOAP note for your um, SOAP.